In this video, I'm going to show you how you can have these wavy lines as well as inverted sections that are movable, and how to make them overlay with each other so that they work together. So let's go. First, let's make a blank node 2D here, so 2D scene. And let's start simple. So I'll make a sprite 2D here, attach that. You can either press this button or, in my case, Control A. We'll go ahead and use the built in icon.svg here. Drag that on. So this is whatever we want to render. Duplicate this a few times just to show that the filter that we're making affects everything. I'll switch to move mode. The hotkey is W. Now back on the node 2D, let's attach the filter itself. Let's start with the inverting one. I'll attach right 2D, and we can name this invert filter. Now you can use basically any image you want here. For my case, I'm going to use a white image. It doesn't really matter the size, we can just stretch it. I'll just click and drag from my file explorer from another project. Now click on the invert filter. I'll expand the side here. And we can attach the white image in the texture. Like I said, it's pretty small. We can scale this up, so I pressed Q, which goes back to the normal select mode. I can click and drag this. If you hold Shift, it keeps the aspect ratio. So I'll put this so that it overlaps all three of these. Now to attach the shader, go down to the material section of your invert filter. New shader material. Click on that circle. The shader, click that, let's say new shader. For the folder that I want to put this in, I'm going to make a new shaders folder. Since this is going to invert, we can name this invert.gd shader. Create that, then click on invert.gd shader. That will give us this panel at the bottom here. We're only going to be messing in the fragment shader, so I'm going to delete the vertex shader and this commented out light section. If you've messed with shaders before, you might know it doesn't by default render what's behind it, but we can do that with this line here, the uniform sampler 2D. We can call this whatever we want. Uh, you can say existing screen texture. That's what makes the most sense to me. Then colon, and these are like settings that we can adjust here. So the one that we want is hint screen texture. This tells us what was already rendered behind here. And if you want it to look a little bit better, you can say filter linear MIP map. This helps when you zoom in or zoom out, it renders it more clearly. Inside the fragment shader section, let's make a variable to store the new color that we're going to use. I'll say vec3 new color is equal to texture. This is a built-in from OpenGL. That's what the shading is based on. So if you want to look at docs for this, you can look up these keywords for OpenGL. So the place that we want to sample from is that existing screen texture that we used. And the coordinates is screen UV, which stores what's already been rendered in this section, the screen UV. And then we have bias. Uh, we can also just leave it blank, but I'll put 0.0. .0. That is, it's basically how in focus it is. And remember, this is shading language, so you need a semicolon at the end. And since this is a texture, this is giving us four values, red, green, and blue, and alpha. So we can just store the .rgb value to actually invert this. We can say new color is equal to 1 minus this, so vec3 of 1. This just makes a vector 3 where every value in it is a 1, and we have to specify it's a float, so I'll do 1.0 minus new color. To actually overwrite what's here, we can say color.rgb is equal to new color. There we go. Now this inverts the colors behind it. You could move around it. this invert filter. You can see it actually does invert what's behind it. So sure, we can go ahead and save this node. We can just call this main, and we can run it. I'll select the current scene as the one that I want to run. There we go, you can see it works. Now let's make a wavy lines filter. I'm going to just add another sprite 2D. So again, attach that to the topmost node. We can call this wavy lines filter. Attach the same white image texture. Add a new shader. Go down in the material section, new shader material. Then add a new shader and set it to be in the shaders folder. We can call this wavy lines. Create that and then click on it to open it. 
Similar to before, we'll remove vertex and light. And if we want, we can copy over that line from before. But we are going to reuse this from invert here. Because again, we want to render what's behind here except with a filter. That's why we use the hint screen texture. And we also want those wavy lines to be configurable. So we'll make a uniform float frequency and set that equal to 60. So you want to modify what's already here. So let's say VEC2, our new UV mapping is going to be all caps screen UV. Make the wavy effect. We'll just use a sign function. So new UV dot X plus equals the sign of our Y position. So new UV dot Y times the frequency. To give this some actual animation, we add the built-in time variable. That's all caps time. Right now we can multiply this by 0 0.005. Let's load this new UV onto our image. To do that, we can say vec3. The new colors that we want to use is equal to texture LOD. Remember, texture LOD is another built-in from OpenGL. If you want more docs, you can read about it there. We're going to use our existing screen texture. And we want to map onto that our new UV. Again, with zero bias. And we only want the RGB part, not the alpha. Basically, we're saying to use our existing texture, but use these offsets that we've just set in our new UV. Then we override the built-in color that we want to render, dot RGB, with our new colors. So you can see we have the wavy effect now. I'm going to expand this wavy line section. You'll see the current problem. We can't have both at once, but we can actually. We just have to do a slight modification. On the node 2D, we can attach a back buffer copy, and we can just drag one of our filters into that. Now we have wavy and inverted, but it's only in that section here. By default, without back buffer copy, each filter independently works on what was there originally, but by adding back buffer, they render on top of each other. So it just takes what was rendered above that in the scene tree and uses that as the shader input. You can overlay as many of these as you want. If you want to adjust the frequency with your wavy lines filter selected, because we made this a uniform float, we have the option over here. But be careful when you do this, because now if you change the value inside the shader itself, then nothing is going to change. So just watch out. If you change it here, then you have to change it from there from now on. If you want, you could also make the amplitude here a variable compared to adjusting it manually. We can go ahead and do that. Just copy paste this line here and call this amplitude and copy this over. Change the value. Now we have the amplitude setting here as well. If I just turn this up, you can see this is how high the waves go on the line. That's how you can have wavy lines and inverted textures and overlay them in Godot 4. Thanks for watching.